Ever wondered how to visualize the interactions within your app in a way everyone can understand? In this video, I'm gonna guide you through creating your very first use case diagram using Star UML. Hey there! Welcome back to our Star UML tutorial series. Today, we're tackling use case diagrams. Unique in the UML family, these diagrams are ideal for explaining system functionalities to our non-technical friends, such as stakeholders. If you've never worked with Star UML or use case diagrams, don't sweat it. By the end of this tutorial, you will not only understand what use case diagrams are, but you will be able to create them effortlessly for your own projects. Let me share a hilarious experience. Once a product owner told me my use case diagrams were too technical. Her solution? Diagrams filled with childlike drawings, think geometrical shapes, flowers, and yes, teddy bears. When I presented these to the team, the room erupted in laughter. The poor product owner's face turned as red as a beet. It was a lesson in keeping things simple but professional. In the end, we stuck to the tried and true use case diagrams, much to everyone's relief. Let's dive into our fitness app example. Use case diagrams show user system interactions in a straightforward manner. Stick figures for actors and ovals for actions. Ok, open up Star UML. We're gonna create a use case diagram. So select the model menu, click add diagram, and choose use case diagram. As you can see, the toolbox now contains use case diagram specific elements. Use case diagrams describe the functional requirements of a system by depicting the actors or users of a specific use case and their interactions with the features or use cases of the software system. Actors are represented by stick figures and use cases are shown as ovals with a text describing the action that can be performed with the system using simple language such as do this or do that. As this tutorial is about using Star UML, we won't dig deeper into use case diagrams. But if you want to find out more about this and the other popular UML diagrams, you should definitely check out my UML and Object Oriented Design Foundations course. It's designed to equip you with the necessary skills, and guess what? In less than two hours, you will grasp the basics of UML, object-oriented design, and much more. And here's the best part. My YouTube viewers get a special discount. Just use the code LEARNWITHCARL at checkout for a friendly discount. You'll find the link right in the video's description below. Don't miss out on this chance to boost your skills. Alright, let's get back to our Star UML tutorial and start creating our first use case diagram. First, we'll add the actor. Select actor from the toolbox and click on the canvas somewhere on the left side. Actors are typically placed on the left of use case diagrams. We'll call our actor fitness enthusiast. Next, we'll define the use cases, our system's actions. Let's select the use case element in the toolbox and place it in the middle of the canvas. Now to come up with ideas for use cases, it's recommended to act as if you were the user of this app. What features would you expect from a fitness app? Well, after installing and starting the app for the first time, we may need to register. So we'll add the first action, sign up. After we signed up, the next logical step would be to log in. Once logged in, a fitness app would allow us to set goals, get stronger, lose weight, build muscle, you name it. However, we should not get lost in the details. So we'll create a more generic action called set goals to cover all these use cases. After setting a goal, the app will allow us to pick a program that helps us achieve our goal. This step could be manual or AI assisted, but again, let's keep it simple. I'll create an action named select a program. Let's add a few more use cases that make sense, like start workout, 
add exercise, and finish workout. We could go on and come up with other features, but this is sufficient to give you an idea of how we define use cases. To link our actor to the actions, we'll use associations. Select association and draw lines from fitness enthusiast to each use case. Now, we could have a unique role with special rights to manage users and system features. Let's call this actor admin. The admin would be able to access features such as remove users, set up discounts, and so on. These features should not be accessed by normal users. Just think of the implications of allowing users to ban each other. It wouldn't be a good idea, right? That's why we need an admin. Next, let's talk about the layout of our use case diagrams. Typically, human actors like fitness enthusiasts are on the left, while the actions are centrally placed. If our system interacts with other systems, we'd represent them as non-human actors on the right side of the diagram. And to define our system's boundaries, we'll select the use case subject in the toolbox and draw a frame around all use cases. This frame represents the fitness app scope. Now, let's assume that our app interacts with an external cloud-based storage. We'll represent this as a non-human actor on the right side, with a different visual to distinguish it. Most tools allow this customization. In Stereo ML, right-click the actor, select Format, Stereotype Display, and choose Decoration or Decoration with Label. Instead of a stick figure, we now have a rectangle, which distinguishes the external cloud storage from an actual human actor. And how about the relevant use cases? This cloud storage synchronizes app data with the cloud. To keep it simple, local data is uploaded to the cloud and users can download workout history and other previously saved information to their devices after reinstalling the app. I'll add a single use case that covers all of these. Let's call it synchronized data. We can even add descriptions to each use case if that helps provide more clarity. For instance, double click on add exercise and select the add note icon in the pop-up to add details like add new exercise to the workout. We could use many other details and elements, but use case diagrams should be clean and straightforward. We should not forget they are primarily meant for non-technical people and not for software engineers. So you should definitely avoid getting too bogged down in the details and using all the available elements just because they are available. If you cannot convey the fundamental features of a system using actors, use cases and interactions alone, you should rethink your strategy and try to clarify the requirements before creating any UML diagrams. This diagram now clearly shows how fitness enthusiasts and the external cloud storage system interact with our app. We can now go ahead and save or export the project. And there you have it, an easy and efficient use case diagram for our fitness app. These diagrams are powerful tools for bridging the gap between technical and non-technical people. In our next video, I'll show you how to create activity diagrams. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to stay updated. And don't forget to check out my course for a deeper dive into UML. Thanks for watching.